Insects to Feed the World is the ambitious title of this first international conference on insects and your program makes clear that uh, the fledgling world insect community has big plans to make a contribution to sustainability of our food system and the global food supply. Why are we working on this issue? A growing body of evidence has shown that insects are extremely efficient in converting organic matter that actually is not competing with human beings for food. The major question is why would we not eat insects and that's a matter of understanding the challenges we're facing as humanity at the moment. At this moment we have 7 billion people and in 2050 we'll grow until 9 billion. Right now we know that 70 countries in the world are in a state of dire food insecurity. 3 million children die every year related to malnutrition. I had an agency within the US Department of Agriculture and our whole interest is ensuring food security uh, for the United States and for the rest of the world as well. To sell this as a solution to the poor in Africa and Asia to, uh, for food security, that will be a very, uh, very bad mistake. So, and I was really happy to see that no one is suggesting that. They are suggesting this is globally, this is a good thing. Something that I found when I was interviewing people that they said we can no longer harvest grasshoppers because of the amount of pesticides being used. In the beginning, as uh, someone who was controlling insects, uh, integrated pest management or biological control, uh, but now instead of beating the insects, we are eating them. That is what we propose now. And I'm talking about the effect of antibiotics on infant growth in Western Kenya. If we're talking about harvesting, how do you know you're over har harvesting? If farmers in Thailand, they need to apply for licenses. Today, there are more than 20,000 cricket farmers registered in Thailand alone. If we want to use insects, then we need to farm them. I think it would be the feed industry which would drive in terms of uh, industrial growth in this sector. I'm, I'm the businessman, by the way, uh, definitely not the scientist. We farm 8.5 billion larvae, so it puts us in a, in a good zone. Right now, we have to harvest fish off the coast of South America to feed our fish. With the technology we've developed, we can actually replace that protein that's dependent on the oceans. We are talking about a whole new sector in animal livestock. When the legislation was made, nobody thought about insects as animals. Insect diseases. Yes, insects also suffer from diseases. So what we really need is an internationally agreed safety framework for the use of insects. We are actively involved in drafting legislation on food and feed safety. Cockroaches are disease vectors. You never know what's going to happen in there. So we say, okay, we'll do it again with a sterilized cockroach right out of an autoclave. It's safer than your fork. <laughs> We drop it in, we take it out, and they say, I don't want it, because you have cockroached the juice. You have put, cockroachness has entered the juice. And we study this phenomenon at some length. So the question is, why are insects disgusting? We can't talk about insects as a homogenous group. It's not like cooking insects. You can just, you know, get the insects and follow the insect recipe. In the same nest, you know, everyone is different, where you get one that tastes like mango, the next one that tastes like salty beef stock with sauterne wine mixed into it, like, these flavours are really, really extraordinary. Our work at Ento is trying to find ways of presenting food with insects in that elicit a sense of curiosity and playfulness. We make chirps, which are the world's first cricket chips. We want to produce protein for the salmon industry in Chile. Well, I'm a designer. The whole life cycle happens within the machine. The larvae can be harvested in any And what are they eating? They are fed on uh, kitchen scraps, so you can feed them your, your organic household wastes. I take uh, city bio-wastes and I farm them to micro crops, things like algae, grass, stuff like that. Then I feed the micro crops to insects, and then the idea is to take the insects and use them as food. Well, in Thailand, the future is now. You can go to the supermarket any day of the week and you will find frozen packages of grasshoppers, uh, silkworm pupae, the giant water bugs and crickets and others. 
What this conference is about is food and feed. And actually at FAO, we are taking care of both issues. Well, there is an agenda for nutrition. And the question is, how can insects feed into that agenda? We've raised $11 million of private equity to go and build our first two factories. I think that's a really exciting first for this industry. It's pure commercial pieces. Those two factories, the first one, F1, will come online next year in 2015. And it will process 110 tons of waste every single day. It'll produce 24 tons of lava every day and make seven tons of magmail every single day. Seeing people from all continents, 45 countries, that tells me that the message has come across and that there's seeds being planted everywhere in the world. 